tracking, positional tracking on mobile, it was a huge bummer to read Palmer say that yesterday. How far off is that? So I spent, you know, I spent a while on that and I am still, I am confident that I could do a good job with stereo cameras. So you're left with the problem there of if you put them in the headset, then either you need to have processing in the headset and you build a whole other system there, or you need to push all the data through USB 3 into the, the phone, which is going to take up a lot of power before it winds up being processed there. So it does not look good for making a system that I am, you know, an inside out tracking system that doesn't consume a whole lot of battery power. What I wanted to have happen was, especially the Snapdragon chipset has. Uh, it has an internal architecture that I think is very well suited for that, where in addition to the CPU and the GPU, they've got a DSP, which is optimized for running at these uh, fixed frequencies, very wide data accesses, and the important thing is cameras can directly stream into that. So the research I was doing was uh, sort of predicated on this thought that if I can make it work now and it overheats the phone in 10 minutes, then we could deploy it onto something like a Snapdragon, and that would then run in 100 milliwatts of power or something uh, because it could barely hit DRAM, stream directly in, process raw images. I think that that could probably work out, but uh, we need something for the sense of scale. So I think we we either we probably want stereo cameras for it. Either that or you have to start estimating where things are in the world. I was trying to estimate scale using the accelerometer and I was not getting good enough data from it. I mean, I, I didn't spend that much time on it, so maybe it is possible, but I, that's one of my three things that I may, you know, when I get back from Connect here, I've kind of got three major directions that I can choose to spend some time on, and going back and taking another swing at position tracking with stereo inside-out cameras is uh, is one of the directions I want to do. It does, you know, it bugs me a little bit. We have like 30 computer vision experts at Oculus from the different companies we've acquired, and none of them want to just go solve this problem. They're all working on their more esoteric uh, yeah. kind of researchy things. Uh, well, this is a this is a problem that I want to solve right now. I wish somebody had, you know, I wish somebody had spent all of this last year on it. We did have one of the 13th Lab guys. I uh, took. Uh, the framework that I had done earlier in the year, and they integrated some of their code. And so they had a, a basic inside-out tracking system for uh, running on Gear VR. It was, you know, it's nowhere near shippable production quality, but it was better than what you got from, like, Euphoria. And I, you know, that was something that I did a couple of years ago, was integrated Euphoria, and you just have to move so slow before it loses tracking. And uh, the 13th Lab stuff worked better. It built a map, and you could... You know, we had the paper town um, model scene from the uh, the Oculus, the, uh, the previous Connect demos there, and it was neat to look at that. It's all kind of jittering around like you'd have from a Tango or something like that. But you know, you could do that, and it showed where you want to go. But it didn't. It wasn't clear that there was a path from that to to a fully shippable application. And then the other huge thing is just it takes a lot of power, and power is uh, is a really big deal on mobile. Where right now we have to go. Something that runs steady state, like uh, like cinema or you know, movie player, we can only use a quarter of the power of the the system. We basically can, you know, you have to use less than one full CPU core and clock down GPU. And if you, it's it's painful at that point to say it's like okay, we can make four times more stuff going on, but it's just going to overheat in ten minutes. I mean, you can actually make the phone overheat in one minute if you buy uh, some of our dense CPU, like computer vision stuff, and some of the CPU time warp stuff. We would literally have you take a cold phone, you start it up, it spins up four core, you know, all four cores doing processing work, and like sixty seconds later, the phone's ah, hot to touch and overheating. So. That's a problem with the inside-out tracking. I think it's solvable. I, I still don't have a ton of support inside the company from the, you know, the researchers don't want to work on, on that problem specifically. Rift uh, is a higher priority. Well, it's we have a there's we don't have any computer vision people working full time on gear at all. You know, because the vision team is all working on uh, first, of course, all on the, the constellation tracking, and then everybody piles on touch because. Touch was very problematic in, uh, in getting the tracking working and increasing the scale. So they've been kind of panic piled onto those projects a lot. You know, we've got yet more people in now, uh, but they're working more on research kind of future direction stuff.